Over the last few weeks, we've been talking a lot about the way atoms and ions interact with each other. We have learned that metals interact with each other by forming metallic bonds, uh, by dumping their valence electrons into the area in between the atoms, creating an electron C. We have learned that non-metals interact with each other by sharing their valence electrons to create covalent bonds. The number of which an element can form is determined, of course, by how many electrons in the the atom needs to have a full valence or outer electron level. We've also learned that metals and non-metals interact to form ionic bonds where metals form positive ions by giving away their valence electrons and non-metals form negative electrons by gaining extra electrons enough to fill their valence shell. This week, we're going to think about how to communicate the existence of these bonds to other people. Scientists need to communicate about molecules and compounds all the time. Each time they need to communicate or share information about a specific molecule or compound, they can't just draw the compound and they can't list out always the whole name of the compound. They need a quick and easy way to describe a substance. That is where chemical formulas come in. The chemical formula is an abbreviation of a molecule or compound. It tells you which elements are involved and it tells you how many of each element is in one unit of that substance. The rules for writing chemical formulas for ionic and covalent bonds are very similar, uh, but have a few differences, so we're going to go over each one independently. Let's start with ionic compounds, compounds made through ionic bonding. Remember, ionic compounds are made of two or more ions that are attracted to each other because of their opposite charges. Often these compounds take the form of ionic crystals. An ionic crystal is a substance like, for example, table salt or sodium chloride, where due to the opposite charges, units of sodium and chlorine ions attract to each other, creating a much larger structure than just the two ions. Ionic crystals, however, can be broken apart into smaller pieces of that substance and are still that substance. So when we write chemical formulas for ionic compounds, we think about them in terms of ratios. Because these crystals of the ionic compound can form in many different sizes and still have the same properties, we don't write the formula for the specific sized crystal. So for ionic compounds, we write them in terms of the lowest, simplest, whole number ratio of the component ions. Where a specific grain of salt may have a couple million ions of sodium and a couple million ions of chlorine in it, we simply write the chemical formula for sodium chloride or table salt as NaCl, showing that in any given sample of table salt, you will have one chlorine ion for every sodium ion in that sample. Not all ionic compounds are as straightforward as sodium chloride. Some ionic compounds have more than one of a particular type of ion. Let's look, take a look at the ionic compound made between calcium and chlorine ions. If we look at the periodic table of elements, we can see that calcium is in the alkaline earth metals group, or column two. That tells us that it has two valence electrons and will form a plus two ion. Chlorine is a halogen and it is in column 17, the second to last column of the periodic table of elements. This tells us that like the other halogens, it has seven valence electrons and can hold up to one additional electron. When it forms an ion, it forms an ion with a charge of negative one. If calcium and chlorine ions bonded in a one-to-one -one ratio, the ionic compound would still have a positive charge. Since calcium is a charge of plus two, you actually need two chlorine ions to balance out that positive charge. So an ionic compound formed between calcium and chlorine has one calcium to every two chlorine ions. To show that in a chemical formula, we write a subscript number, the little number, after the chemical symbol for chlorine, making the chemical formula for calcium chloride CaCl2. You'll notice in both of these examples for ionic compounds, we listed the metal first, followed by the nonmetal. So that we can make sure that everyone is communicating in the same way, someone a long time ago decided that when you write ionic compounds, you always list the metal or positive ion in the formula, and then you list the negative ion. Now let's talk about covalent compounds and molecules. I said both compounds and molecules because sometimes covalent bonds happen between two atoms of the same element, which would be a molecule, but not a compound. Bonding between two or more elements or atoms is represented very similarly to bonding between two or more 
ions in ionic bonding. However, unlike in ionic compounds, things are, that are bonded covalently form distinct molecules. And so when we talk about covalently bonded compounds, we have to account for each and every atom in that substance. This sometimes leads to very large numbers in the chemical formula. But let's start small. Methane is a substance made up of carbon and hydrogen atoms. It is a gas and, well, it's commonly found in farts. We're starting off with methane because it's a pretty simple molecule. It has one atom of carbon and four atoms of hydrogen. Remember from the last few weeks, carbon has four valence electrons and can make up to four bonds with other metals. So each of those hydrogen atoms is bonded directly to that carbon atom. To describe this molecule to others using a chemical formula, we would write CH4. This tells us that there is one carbon and four hydrogen in the molecule. Notice, just like in the ionic bonds, we didn't write a subscript number next to the element that had, there's only one in the substance. It would be a different compound if you did write a subscript one uh, next to the carbon, but the chemical formula wouldn't even include the C, the chemical symbol of carbon, if that element wasn't in the substance. So we don't write that number one. Let's try a trickier molecule. Glucose is a type of simple sugar found in carbohydrates that's essential for providing energy to living things. As you can see, it's a molecule that is much larger than the methane we just looked at. It actually has a total of six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms. To write the fo chemical formula for this molecule, we would have to include each of these elements and their amounts when making the chemical formula. That means that the chemical formula for glucose is C6H12O6. We write the elements in that order because like in ionic compounds, scientists have a specific way of ordering the elements. In the case of covalent compounds, we order them from the least electronegative to the most electronegative. We just went over a lot. So let's simplify this into some basic steps for writing a chemical formula. Step one, determine which elements are involved and their chemical symbols. Step two, count how many of each element is in that compound or molecule. Step three, determine if it is a covalent compound or an ionic compound. Step four, if covalent, write the chemical symbols and the amount in the order of increasing electronegativity. If ionic, write those chemical symbols in the order of positive ions first, followed by the negative ions, making sure to include the subscript numbers that represent that lowest whole number ratio of the elements in that compound. Now let's try some together. What would the chemical formulas for these compounds be. 